Welcome to the car guys. This week we've got a full review and Jason's first drive of the Maybach. I'm going to get to find out what it's like to be a chauffeur for the day because Damien's demanding that I drive him around. So we're going to find out what 530 odd horsepower feels like in a car that weighs as much as a small village. So Jason, here we are. This is the Maybach that I... Maybach? Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? How we... I call it Maybach, that's how I naturally say it, but apparently you're supposed to say it Maybach. Maybach? Yeah. Maybach. Yeah. Like you're coughing up phlegm? Yeah. Yeah, okay. To me, it just doesn't sound right. And to be fair, I'm from Essex, so I naturally mispronounce literally everything, so I can get away with it. So we're agreed. We are. Maybach. Maybach. One of the things I found quite quickly upon buying this car is that although it is 11 billion miles long, mm. the boot space is actually pretty small. Shocking. Specifically, when you order the first class seats, you of course get the fridge, yep. and the fridge takes up all the boot. Behold. It's ridiculous. You can barely get one of your Louis Vuitton suitcases in there, <laughs> let alone a full set. Look at it. So as we can see, we have this enormous fridge. Every time you want to put some meaningful suitcases in the back of this car, you have to take the fridge out. Turn these little screws here, turn them there. You've got to disconnect, disconnect the power. Right, now, look Holy at the- mother of God. Look at the size of this fridge. <laughs> and forget the size, Oh, feel the weight of this. Look at that. Look at that. That's a fridge. I want to experience this because I can't. First of all, I'm shocked even that you can take this thing out of here. But secondly, bloody hell, this must go 20 kilos. That's ridiculous. While Damien's mucking around with the fridge, because. Get in there, you Awkward. Let's have a little walk around the cars and we can have a look at some of the features which I particularly like. So let's start with these absolutely stunning alloys. Now we talk a lot about these, but it's a bit difficult not to because they are just incredible. We have the Carl Benz signature down here at the bottom of the windscreen. Now that is class. Look at the blue tinge on these seats. Absolutely ridiculous. A quick pop down to your local chemist and some baby wipes and all of that comes off. So one of the things that Damien has managed to swap out on this car is the Maybach badge. So look here, see, Maybach badge, very nice. So yeah, first priority for me was to get rid of the Mercedes badge that was on the front of the car and replace it with a much cooler Maybach badge. So if I lift up the bonnet, I'll show you how easy it is. All you had to do really was use some pliers, turn this, 90 degrees, so you can see here, you just have to turn that 90 degrees with a set of pliers, it pops out, stick the other one in there, 90 degree back again, and there it is. So it actually was the easiest job ever. And the Mercedes dealer completely lied to me when they said that the Maybach badge was a different size and you couldn't swap it round. Ha ha ha, yes you can. Um, are you are you comfortable in the back, sir? Yes, thank you, driver. Right then, here we are. Um, I have to keep my voice down because um, sometimes Damien uh, likes to be chauffeured around in his Maybach. He doesn't feel that purchasing a car of this kind of stature should be driven all the time by himself and he wants to feel what it's like to be a captain of industry again. Left here please driver. If you really need to be chauffeured and you don't want to, the stigma of a Rolls Royce, the next thing is the Maybach. Now originally these cars were a standalone model um, but then Mercedes incorporated them back into the brand. One thing I do know about this car though it is absolutely enormous. Honestly, this thing is like driving a very large tanker through this tiny little Essex village. So let's talk about some stats. This car currently is running over 500 horsepower and 814 newton meters of torque. Now what does that mean? Well that means that it can hustle itself up to a national speed limit fairly quickly. But it has a couple of other tricks up its sleeve too. 
one of those tricks is that it has a sport button. Damien's having a lovely time in the back there pretending he's something important again. <clears throat> However, the reason why he doesn't make me do this very often is because I get bored fairly quickly with the chauffeuring duties. I just gently push the sports button. Don't even think he's actually noticed. Um, and then we can have a bit of fun. Jesus Christ! Oi! Oi! What the <laughs> hell's going on? <laughs> I'm bored with really him wafting you around, for goodness sake. A tad of beanage. You, oh, my <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that's properly quick, isn't it? I mean, I'm not sure the brakes can possibly cope with Too the, much of that. the velocity and the momentum and the sheer weight of this thing. This is really. No, it can't. Whoa, whoa. See, I'm... Yeah, they're not, they're not. They're not hugely confidence inspiring, I think. No. To be fair though, hustling around country lanes is not exactly what this car was designed for. I mean, it's, it's not bad at it. It's not its natural habitat. Oh, oh, <laughs> a properly dropped me sterling plated goblet. You maniac. Awkward. Let's take it out of sport, shall we? Let's go back into economy, or what is E then? What would E be? E is economy. It is economy? Yeah. Economy yeah. in a car like this? But I'll have you know, with economy, this car, in theory, will do 24 miles to the gallon. Really? Yep. What, downhill, with a wind behind it? Yep. Exactly. I've never achieved that, mind you, but no, in theory it's possible. Actually... So you have to remember, this weighs 2.3 tonnes. It can accelerate 0 to 60 in five seconds. Five seconds for this car is astounding. And actually, it's it's quite a nice drive. How does it feel flexi-wise when you go around the corners? Can you feel the length of the car? Oh, oh it feels massive. It, yeah. it feels like I've got a trailer and uh, like I'm driving an Arctic lorry, really. To me, it's almost like having a bendy bus. <laughs> Because you can sort of really feel the back of it moving around. You know like how you stand in a tube train yeah. and you can see it snaking ahead of you. A wristwatch check. Jason, what have you got on your wrist? Right, so on my wrist today, I am wearing a Tag Heuer Aqua Racer, limited edition. I'm wearing the Constantine Chaikin Night Joker, which is one of the hottest, coolest watches at the moment. It's absolutely bonkers gives you googly-eyed time-telling. This feels cavernous. I mean, it's a whole nother level of space, isn't it? So I've got lots of glass. I've got two enormous sort of sunroofs, which can be tinted. Tinted as well. Tinted to dark blue or clear, as they are now. There's so much beige in this thing. It's sort of topped with chocolate leather on the on the top, which kind of helps to sort of settle it a bit. But we're talking about acres of beige. We've got lots of perforations where everything is vented. We've got some diamond stitching all over the place as well. And then you've got flipping hundreds of Burmeister stereo speakers in polished metal all over it as well. And a bit of walnut thrown in for good measure. God, this is like being in an IMAX cinema back here. <laughs> it's quite extraordinary. You know how like sometimes you can put on like virtual reality headset goggles? Yeah, yeah. It's like having those on all the time. You say that there's a lot of space, but, but what you've got there at the moment is not as much space as you could have though, is it? That's true. I mean, I could, I could engage more buttons and get even more recline. And also the front passenger seat can fold away into the distance and give me basically a full reclining bed. Could you sense that acoustic enhancement device come on then? The acoustic enhancement feel that? It almost feels like your ears are slightly popping, you know yeah. when you're in a plane? I thought that was just... What, the pressure of going so fast? Yeah. Could be, could be, but also if you talk, when you talk sort of more towards the centre, that sort of centre speaker up there at the top, when you talk more to there, yeah. that then pipes your voice back through the rear speakers to me so that I can hear you better. So when I say, I, I'm terribly sorry sir, but um, there seems to be some congestion on the A12, would you like to go a different route? I would say, don't bother me with such trivial nonsense. Shut up and get on with it. So cruel, so cruel. 
I have to say the ride comfort is very similar to Rolls. Oh really? Yeah, it's not quite as supple. It doesn't feel particularly Rolls Royce to me. The Rolls Royce feels a little bit more upright. This has all of the bounce rate and softness, but also slight harshness of one of those enormous big Crown Victoria New York taxis. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost like it's very softly sprung, but yeah. quite well damped. These seats here, the setup that's in this car particularly, is the is the first class seat setup. So it's one of the one of the few options that you can tick once you're into Maybach territories. You can either have the normal seats in the back, or you can have the full reclining first class experience, which also adds in the fridge. I've got all the controls I need to get the seating position reclined perfectly. I've got my heating and my cooling. I've got my chilled drink holders. I've got all of my USB type stuff to connect up my devices. I've obviously got TV in front of me. So we've got twin TV screens here, which allows us to just watch whatever TV programs we want. Bluetooth headphones, no cables, no need to muck about there. They're very cute. Remote control for each television. I've obviously got my tray tables in here, which fold out and allow me to put the laptop on and do all that sort of stuff. We've got rear blinds and we've got blinds on the side windows as well. So we can sort of uh, pull the rear blind up like that. And obviously my 1996 BMW 750's got that as well. well my M3 it's had that, good. so, you know. M3? But, yeah, my, M, my old uh, E46 M3 had rear blinds. Lovely ones on the side window. Yeah, that's good. If you've got one of these and you've if you've paid full dollar for it yes. instead of the you know ridiculous sum of money that you paid <laughs> no, no 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 we're not telling you what it is <laughs> this is what they call um, living the high life yeah you, you're part of the jet set if you've got one of these hello wake up oh sorry sorry I'll tell you what these cushions here I mean I'm not sure what these are made of mink or something but. I don't think you're allowed lovely. to make things of mink anymore. Look at it. This is more comfortable than my bed. I'm enjoying pointing the little pointy bit of the... Yeah, the little Masonic symbol. The other thing is that if you were to remove the Maybach badging off the rear of this and you were following it down the road, yeah. you could be excused for thinking this was a Dutch taxi. <laughs> Why, you? why a Dutch taxi? Well, I just uh, every time you go to Skipper Airport, there's just thousands. I mean, from the side, with those gorgeous chrome chrome B pillars, oh. looks amazing. It just looks incredible. But at the back, you're like, oh, it's just another boring old Mercedes. Part of the reason why I love this car so much is I am an enormous fan of the Mercedes 600 Grosser. So, right. if you remember, that was dictator that sort of... car of choice. Exactly, yeah. Idi Amin, probably Saddam Hussein, all the all the greats. That sort of slammed, hydraulic operated Mercedes, totally beautiful. Always had a soft spot for those. It's even it's obviously far more iconic and better looking than this. It was part of the reason why why I went for this as well. Is this is obviously the modern equivalent of that. Putin must have at least four. Oh God, yeah. I've driven this car at least, I think maybe three or four thousand miles already. One thing that stood out negatively is that those enormous low profile tyres do seem particularly susceptible to punctures. There was a pothole I hit that just immediately split the sidewall of one of the tyres. Another one's gone flat, another one was all worn in a strange way. So I've had to replace already three of the tyres in this car. Three tyres? What was that? The cost of a small bungalow? They're not specially weighted for the car or produced specifically for the Maybach. They've got badging on them or something like that. Not the ones I buy. <laughs> Ooh, yuck. So what are your impressions? What do you think of it? It's not a car that I'm particularly interested in hustling. It, it, it is a lovely car to waft, but actually because of all that talk and the very lovely Mercedes gearbox, you can very easily get into a nice rhythm with this. You know, you could do at least nine or 10 hours straight in this, yeah. get out the other side, you wouldn't even know that you'd done it. Sitting at 70 miles an hour, it's very relaxed. It's quite a calm place to be. Yep. I don't feel like I'm constantly trying to overtake people or, or get it hustled around the next corner. I'm quite happy just to waft along and let yep. time pass as it, as it naturally does. I'm not overly keen on the walnut on the top of the steering wheel. 
Yeah, I know. We're not That's big bit... fans of the old sort of two-tone steering wheel. It's a no. bit old man isn't it? It is. I don't mind the beige. I thought, you know, it's not the colour that I would sort of normally necessarily go for, but I, the combination of the walnut and the beige, I don't mind that much, but you're right. Well, Maybe steering wheel a bit too much. Steering wheel's too much. I mean, these seats stain badly enough from blue jeans anyway. Yeah. Could you imagine having white in here? That would just be yeah. awful. Black be would be red. too dark. This is this is Learjet beige, isn't it? Gulfstream <laughs> Gulf beige. You've got quite a lot of stuff up here for the driver as well. Yeah. I mean, the seats are heated and cooled. And massaged. And massaged. Yeah. You know, all of the really cool stuff that you'd like. I don't think I've got massage back here. Oh, really? I don't think so. Although there's probably another button hidden somewhere that you haven't actually pushed yet. All the dials are digital. It's absolutely a nice place to sit. However, I've just noticed there are paddles on the back of this steering wheel. Yes. No. Not yes. No. It's never even crossed my mind to press the paddles in this car. It is a good way of showing how smooth the gearbox is, though, because I've just gone up three gears. Did you notice? Not at all. No. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. Yeah, what? Look, it's a gear. I've just gone up a gear. No. No? There's, there's, it's absolutely down. imperceptible. I'm going to go up, back up. No? No, not a thing. And another one. No. No? Down two. Slight. Very, very, very slight. Because I hit two at the same time. Yeah. So this is another 20 centimetres longer, or between the wheels, yeah. than the longest Mercedes yeah. that they produce. Which basically means we've got... 20 more centimetres legroom here, which is why it's so massive. It's not lacking space. And I've had, I've had, I'm not, I was going to say I've had a load of big blokes in the back of here. <laughs> that didn't sound right. Oh. There have been friends of mine who are tall who've sat in the back and they simply cannot believe the room in here. Safety slash cool gadget things we've got in this car. The always annoying <laughs> the always annoying proximity alarms depending on if there's cars yeah <laughs> say you're passing something and you think okay i've passed it enough now i'll indicate back in it still goes bong 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 all right all right i get it i'm looking stop it i've got bongs if i'm too close in the front i've got bongs from behind i've got bongs to the left of me i've got bongs to the right of me stuck in the middle with you so we got white line staying within white line gadgetry which yeah, sort of makes yeah. takes line, the steering wheel space. yeah that's really annoying hate that have to turn that off all the time because i do not like fighting cars <laughs> radar assisted cruise control which will keep a set distance away from the car in front and will also brake if someone slams their brakes on or if it perceives that you're coming up on a car or object too quickly it will break isn't that the one that they they went to show off uh, yes. so, and then it didn't work. Yes, and it, it just went smashed, yeah, smashed smashed straight into, into the it. back of it. Yeah. <laughs> that, exactly that. Yeah, not trusting that system then. No. no. We've got night vision. Night vision. Night vision and night vision alert so that basically it alerts you to things on the side of the road like pedestrians or animals. Is this like the freaking lasers that come out of the uh, of the Rolls-Royce Cullinan? Not quite as sophisticated, but... But close. In the Cullinan, the lasers fire out of the car to startle the animal That's away right. from the road. That's right. In this one, it just highlights it and says, here's a fox. That you could maybe yeah. run over if you want to. Yeah, you may run over, you may not. One of the things I noticed actually, um, driving up to see you, is if you are starting to get drowsy uh, and it, so if it senses that your eyes are maybe sort of closing or beginning to close or your head moves it will put up a big old alert on the screen to wake you up and it's got a little sort of cup of coffee icon that says maybe go and take a break go on which is quite good because you know let's face it you don't really want to fall asleep in one of these things it'll take out a, a school queue <laughs> and the next thing you know You've curbed those beautiful chrome alloys. Oh, which are so beautiful. I love them. They're like, they're like sort of Sunday dinner plates. Oh, they're amazing. I love them. They're the type of wheels that the Queen would have a swan delivered on. <laughs> yes, that's right. Prince <laughs> Philip, Philip, <laughs> is your swan. Oh, lovely. I've got a 360 degree camera button down here. Now, yes. what does that give me? That's, well, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, again, a lot of cars now have got that, but that will give you the full, as if, there was a, a camera mounted above the car showing you all the obstacles. But it does mean that even though the car is the length of South End Pier, 
you can actually park it quite easily, which is quite surprising to most people. It does feel like I'm spending a lot of time at petrol stations. Oh, really? Yes. I'm very, very friendly with my local petroleum suppliers. Oh. So if you were to fill this, how far do you think you could go in it? I mean, has it got a massive tank or is it... It's a decent sized tank, but I think if you fill it up to the max, you're probably going to get about 350 to 380 miles range. Oh, so it's not huge then. It's not huge. Remember though, it is it's a six litre by turbo V12. It was not, I repeat, not developed to sip fuel. No. It was developed to burn it as quickly as possible in the name of refinement. Well, obviously, if you can afford a car like this and you've probably owned one of these yachts as well, etc., etc., you're not really worried about the cost of fuel. That's yeah. not your concern. Another little special thing, actually, the uh, seat belts, you know, like the bit where you put your seat belt oh, into, yeah. Yeah. They, they light up, they're illuminated, so you can see where to put them. Oh, that's useful. And also, to add to the first classness of these, of these seats, mm. these seat belts, they're, they're sort of double insulated double oh stitched. look so they're nice have they got like thicker. softness thicker because oh. thicker is more luxurious my seat belts oh. no you've got peasant spec so we parked up here in front of Canudan church we've ran round it three times <laughs> the devil has not appeared <laughs> despite popular legend you've now driven this car extensively as have i uh what do you think of it uh, as a driving machine it's Wafty. Mm, wafty. It's quite it's quite compliant. The ride is very nice. It doesn't lull over in the corners like you might expect it to because it's a big limousine. This is definitely not and could never be considered in any way, shape or form, even a super saloon. It's not that. No. This car has been designed for one passenger only, and that's the one that sits behind the passenger seat in the back because that's the, where the most legroom is, that's where all the buttons are, that's where all the fridge is. It's not designed for the people that sit up here. These are bodyguard and driver seats. <laughs> Things we like the most about the Maybach, absolute unadulterated, unashamed luxury. Yep. Massive first class seats. Yep. Loads of tech and cool tech. Yep. Mysterious Illuminati badging, a limitless power, seemingly. Seemingly so. V12, waftability, ride comfort. I love the speakers. Speaker system is incredible. It's high quality. The way that the sort of speakers emerge from the side of the car, that's really, really cool. Love that. But there is, I mean, I like, I like music as much as the next man. But I can, just sitting here, I can see 12 speakers. We hate the fridge. When you're in here, right, it's perfect because you can use your lovely yep. silver goblets to sip your champagne. But as soon as you want to put any luggage in it... Yeah, you're buggered. You're buggered and the fridge is a horrible, hateful thing. Yeah, I have to say, I think the horrible, hateful aspect of the fridge outweighs the, oh, occasionally I want some champers. Yeah. The number of times you've got a hoik that bloody thing out of here in order to fit things in it's a real pain and then where do you put it you, you know you can't bring no, it with it's you it's the size of a carry cot it's yeah. ridiculous we hate the uh, tire susceptibility to puncture and ripping we don't like the fact that it looks like uh, every other taxi cab in Schiphol <coughs> airport that that is a problem i mean we are talking plastic there vents. is there is some plastic plastic vintage. vents you see to be fair I wasn't to bentley comment on that but well no i mean you know we, we yeah. highlighted that on bentley we and did. rolls royce and it's there is quite a lot of the most of the buttons and everything in here are plastic they're not metal in here it's plastic in the rolls royce it's glass or metal don't like this silly walnut stuff on top of the steering wheel but that is fairly minor and i'm really scratching around to, for things that I don't like about it. As you'd expect, it's a big, luxurious Mercedes. It does that exceptionally, exceptionally well. well. And it's got a cool badge. It's got a different image to it. There aren't that many of them. It's a bit more secretive. It's a bit more Illuminati. And that makes it interesting and therefore cool. For me, the Maybach badge on, the, on this car is like having an Alpina badge on a BMW. It's just the extra icing on the cake. It's yeah. like... I know I like these cars, but I know something that you don't. Thanks for watching this episode on the full review of the Maybach. Really hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Don't forget to subscribe, leave comments because we read them all. Ding that notification bell, find us on Instagram, Facebook, and don't forget the website. There'll be another Car Guys episode along next week.